Hello and welcome to the series. I'm going to be taking you through how to run a Bitcoin node, but not just any Bitcoin node, one that is fully featured as well as um, one that you can uh, engage your friends and family to use as well. Um, and so what this will uh, end up being is a workstation that hopefully uh, you can be proud of um, and a, um, a, a workstation for all of your Bitcoin related matters. Now, just by way of overview, um, what we're going to be focusing on is, I guess the first um, piece would be hardware. I'll take you through some of the hardware uh, that you will need. Um, so the, the minimum requirements of what um, you will need uh, in terms of uh, physical equipment um, and computer parts. Um, and what we'll also, I'll, I'll take you through, you know, an easy way and cheap way to learn first uh, before you go out and, and buy um, certain things. I'll do a bit of a show and tell as well in terms of, you know, some of the rigs that I have, um, some machines and those sorts of things um, where, you know, I have had success with. So uh, maybe you, you might as well. Um, so that's, uh, we'll spend a significant amount of time on hardware. Now, in terms of the next uh, piece of the series will be uh, internet connections and home networks. I'll take you through IP addresses. Um, we'll go through how the internet gets to your house, um, how uh, computers are in your network um, and what they're managed by routers, modems, all that sort of stuff. Um, we'll talk uh, extensively about VPNs as well as Tor as well. So um, that is, uh, and also I'll, I'll talk you through some of the basic uh, network tips um, that can improve your security. The next part of the series will then focus on installing the operating system itself. Um, now we're gonna be using Ubuntu 20.04. It's a distribution of Linux. Um, I'll get you familiar with that, with you know how to install it, what settings we're gonna be um, using. Um, and we'll also go through some of the familiarization pieces around Ubuntu. Um, I'll talk you through why I've chosen Ubuntu as well. Um, and uh, we'll go extensively uh, into the command line, which is something uh, that you may or may not have experience with, but it is definitely worthwhile digging into. Um, and I'll marry that up with the graphical user interface as well, so you just know how everything works. Um, I'll talk you through how to install packages, how to uninstall packages, packages meaning software, uh, pieces of software. We'll install a VPN, we'll install Tor, we'll install Tor um, and we'll also install other uh, dependencies and packages that later on in the series we will probably need to call on. Um, so for example, the build essential package, Docker, uh, node package manager, all those sorts of things um, so that you have a good experience when it comes to installing some of these packages um, that are, that are going to happen later on in the series. Now, just by way of overview, I guess, in terms of what we are going to be installing, I have a diagram here um, which shows essentially uh, the Ubuntu node box for 2020. Um, these are my, I guess, top picks of pieces of software uh, for your Bitcoin node. Um, feel free to, you know, amend how you see fit. Um, but essentially, you, the first thing that you will stand out in this diagram is that uh, Bitcoin D is where all the arrows point to. So that is a very, very important piece of software there. Um, so we will learn to download, we will uh, verify, we will install, we will configure. Then we'll do the initial blockchain download. Um, we'll set it up such that only uh, your, your peers are, con uh, are connected via Tor and are communicating over Tor. So um, those connections are all, all, all through Tor. Um, that adds a little bit more privacy. Um, and then I will configure this thing to, uh, this piece of software, Bitcoin Core, to um, start on boot, which means that on, you know, if in the event of something going, um, you know, your, your, your hardware going down uh, for, you know, whatever reason, um, that when you start that back on, uh, Bitcoin automatically starts up in the background as well. Um, we'll then go into some familiarization pieces around uh, Bitcoin, like some of the command lines um, that you can use. And then finally, we will also update uh, or upgrade each or, or at least learn to upgrade um, to the next version of Bitcoin whenever that comes out. So um, yeah, so I'll, I'll take you through how to, how to do that as well.
Now, I have also, you'll notice that I have set up this node box in certain sections here, so, or, or categories. Um, you'll see here, there's cold storage, there's exploring Bitcoin, there's spending slash hot wallet, uh, there's earn Bitcoin, there's exposing the node, as well as the finally will go down the path of the Lightning Network. Now, in terms of cold storage, we'll, we'll uh, learn to install an Electrum server. Um, this can be the back end to, uh, well, an index of all transactions, um, but it's a back end to your Electrum wallet. Um, it not just services Electrum wallet these days, uh, it also, uh, there's other wallets out there that use an Electrum um, server, such as uh, uh, Blue Wallet uses it, as well as uh, Sparrow Wallet. So those are some of the uh, up and coming wallets that um, use the Electrum server as a backend. The, then we will install Electrum wallet itself. Um, and then we will connect that through to each of our hardware devices. Now you may not have all of these hardware devices, but it can all be connected through to um, your Electrum wallet here. So that uh, we'll be able to use our hardware wallets with our own Electrum server, which then hooks back into Bitcoin. And you will essentially be pretty self-sovereign. Now, what has, I think has been a game changer is uh, Spectre Desktop. Um, this is a uh, multi-sig piece of software. Generally, it, it can be used for single sig as well, um, but the beauty of it is that it interacts directly with Bitcoin D with no need for an Electrum server. Um, and so you can connect your hardware devices through to Spectre Desktop and Spectre Desktop will then connect through to Bitcoin D. And so you get this nice um, uh, way of interacting with your uh, your hardware wallet without the overhead of having an Electrum server there. So that's something really cool and exciting and um, uh, we'll be running that through on a uh, web-based um, so that it's all available throughout throughout your network as well. So um, that sort of, I guess, uh, uh, sums up or, or completes the cold storage side of things. Then we'll move on to exploring Bitcoin, which is... Um, a piece of software called BTC RPC Explorer. This is a block explorer um, and it's a web page again um, and it uh, allows you to uh, view the status of your node in a nice graphical manner, um, how big the blockchain size is. Uh, it's got lots and lots of stats um, that you can pull in as well as explore the transactions and go back to you know uh, the Coinbase if you um, wish to do that. Now, uh, that will also have a link through to your Electrum server as well. So some of the um, enhanced features or, or, or the more detail around the transaction uh, and, and the addresses are all uh, qu being queried from your Electrum server and picked up by BTC RPC Explorer. So we'll learn to configure all of that as well. Um, now, by way of spending slash hot wallet, um, the... I, I think the best spending wallet at the moment is Samurai Wallet. That's just a personal opinion of mine. Um, but I think what what I'll take you through is uh, installing Samurai Wallet on an Android device. It is only available on Android at the moment. Um, and you will want to also install your Samurai Wallet Dojo. So instead of uh, connecting through to Samurai Wallet servers, you can connect through to your own Dojo, which is then backed by Bitcoin D. Um, so that is something that we will uh, look to do and install and configure and all that sort of stuff and be a, a, a reliable place for you to have your Samurai Wallet connected on the go, wherever you are, you know, uh, as long as you've got internet connection, you will always connect back to your own dojo sitting at home. So that's something that we will take advantage of. Um, the other thing that we will also install is Whirlpool CLI, which is um, the CoinJoin implementation. This allows us to uh, sit uh, or, or rather mix our or participate in coin joins 24 seven and keep remixing uh, those coins uh, in the background, um, adding to uh, your privacy and the privacy of others. So that is a, a, a another key piece of software that we will be installing for coin joining. And so that presents the entire, I guess, Samurai wallet stack. Um, and I'll go through that in extensive detail.
Now, the next part will be earning Bitcoin. I think that this is um, a very, very important project. It's called BTC Pay Server. Uh, we'll be doing the manual deployment of that, um, uh, and that is back-ended by uh, a piece of software called MB Explorer, which then hooks into Bitcoin D. Um, so we will install and configure this, um, and we will uh, manually deploy this, um, and I will also uh, show you how you can expose this safely out to, to the rest of the world, um, such that you know uh, other people can pay you for your goods and services. And what you might want to do is then integrate this with, um, say, for example, a Samurai Wallet uh, XPub, and you can then, uh, you know, uh, people can pay you directly into your Samurai Wallet. You can then mix it, and then maybe you can put it into cold storage from there. Um, so that is a, a nice rounded way of, of earning Bitcoin, mixing it, and then storing it or spending it, um, depending on how, how, how you see fit. And so that is something uh, that is a nice workflow there. I think that presents a really, really nice framework for you to 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 earn Bitcoin. Um, the next part is to then expose this node. Um, we've got two options here. We can go down the VPN route or we can go down the Tor route. Um, now, I, the way that I like uh, that I have uh, I have found to be the easiest way um, is through zero tier, and we'll talk uh, more extensively about that when we come to um, that section of the series. So at this point, you can allow computers and mobile phones and devices to connect through to your own node, and so they can connect through to your Electrum server. They can connect through to um, you know your uh, any other service that's running. So for example, uh, BTC RPC Explorer, and then they might even be able to connect through to your Lightning network uh, once we get into that. Now that is um, a really really. Uh, that's again a very good uh, open source um, uh, piece of software uh, that I use uh, extensively and I think it it presents really really good value when uh, you don't want to be too configuring too much around with your router and opening up ports and those sorts of things so I'll explain zero tier and how we can um, use that to our advantage and it's free as well so that's that's fantastic um, the other piece of of software that we will come down to is the Lightning Network or the other category. Um, we'll install LND, which is the Lightning Network daemon, um, and we will then uh, go on to configure that, install it, run it through Tor, uh, all of that good stuff, and then we will install RTL so that we have a nice graphical way of, of accessing it. Again, that's another web page based piece of software. Uh, then we will also install LND Connect, um, and so your LND Connect will then uh, allow you to connect Zeus Wallet, Zap Wallet, and all these other things, so that you can, um, you know, connect through on the fly on your mobile phone, um, and so you can have Lightning transactions going uh, again using zero tier. Um, you can then connect back to your own home and use it outside of your network, no matter where you are. So that's really, really good. Uh, the other piece of software that's not I uh, haven't listed here is uh, LND Hub. So I'll, I'll, I'll take you through the LND Hub. So that allows you to ha open up sort of like accounts um, for people. So if you want to uh, share that uh, LND node, so you become the um, the channel manager and everybody else kind of just uh, uses that Lightning Network node. That presents, I guess, a, a, a complete plan or an overview of, of all the software um, that this one machine will handle. So what are some of the advantages to a, a node box like this? I think, um, you know, I, I think one of the key advantages is a little bit more sovereignty. You get to pick and choose exactly what you want to install and what you don't want to install. You also get to choose when you update it and if you want to update it. Um, and it's a little bit more, I guess, self-sovereign in that, in that respect. The other advantage is I think that if you use a normal, you know, uh, general purpose computer uh, to do this on, I think you can get it done on the cheap, but also you get more grunt um, and it'll just be a little bit more, it'll be a bit more snappier. Um, so that's another advantage to this type of setup. In terms of tips, um, I think my first tip would be uh, go through the entire series at two speed, um, at two speed playback and get an idea of what I'm trying to do and how I'm doing it. So you have a high level understanding of, okay, this is what I'm doing. This is um, you know, how I'm building this thing out. 
once you've uh, sort of had a ha- had a go through the entire or, or, or look through the entire uh, entire series, um, the second part would be to or, or your second run would be to pay close attention to details. Um, a rogue uh, slash a rogue hash, um, a missing hash or a missing something uh, could end up uh, being the difference between you having a really really successful and happy time uh, with your node or you wanting to throw your uh, computer um, against the brick wall. So just be very, very mindful of uh, the details that I am presenting um, as, as, I, as I kind of build this um, entire node box out. Now, if you are a beginner, uh, this is probably not the best place to start. I think that this is something a little bit more advanced. Um, it's as much as I, you know, you're more than welcome to watch. Um, but I think that you, if you don't understand what a UTXO is, you don't know what an XPUB is, you don't know certain things, um, then there's a steep learning curve that you still need to go down. Um, so I think that that is something uh, that you will need to uh, research up on um, because there's a lot of material here. Now, in terms of uh, the operating system itself, uh, I'm using Ubuntu. Now, I'm going to be using Ubuntu 20.04, um, which uh, which is a LTS version, which stands for long-term support. So generally, when Ubuntu comes out with an operating system, um, 20.04 just stands for April 2020. Um, and so that is uh, basically... Um, supported by the developers for five years. However, they bring out an LTS every two years. So the next one I'm expecting is Ubuntu 22.04. And so by then, um, I will probably do another series. And by then, hopefully, um, I will be able to be in a position to either, you know, swap and change a, a few things in the, in the node, depending upon, you know, what I like, as well as what's good and any up and coming new software that I think is uh, worth my interest. So I think um, every two years you can expect a a series roughly um, uh, that will take you through this entire node box. Um, So that is something that you can look forward to, I guess. Thanks for watching. And if you would like to support the work that I am doing, head on over to our website at ministryofnodes.com.au and click on the support button. We also have paid video tutorials, so feel free to check out our store for that. On our web store, you can find a booklet that contains the commands to the entire series. So feel free to check that out as well. And finally, we also offer private consulting sessions where we can discuss Bitcoin related matters. Feel free to book in a session on our calendar. Once again, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.